Hello and welcome back to PaleoCast. My name's Dave Marshall and joining me is Tom Fletcher and we are looking at episode 7 of Life on Our Planet. Tom, you've Hello. got 14 seconds. 3, 2, 1, go. Episode 7 is really the celebration of the mammals, their diversity and all of the key transitions that they had. Everything from bats to whales. Uh, it's a cool episode. That was 10 seconds. <gasps> no way. Because we originally started with a 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, oh, I'm proud of that. Good. <laughs> I did the episode a real disservice by condensing it into 10 seconds, and I apologize. But uh, yeah, got it. There's, there's an awful lot more than 10 seconds worth. Yeah, there really is. This, this is an absolute, this is a meaty sandwich, this one. It's got loads and loads of animals in. Uh, modern and extinct and it's a, yeah as I said it's just a showcase of mammalian evolution really it is also a roller coaster yeah absolutely I, there are some really emotional scenes in there um, and there are also really dramatic ones too uh, so you're, you're taken on a journey through some some comedy some intrigue some uh, really sad bits and yeah just the awe inspiring whales at the end I mean it's yeah it is a roller coaster yeah you're right so if you have already seen the episode, then my interview with Darren, who is the one that was out there, the assistant producer who is responsible for the snow leopard scene, he reveals a lot of extra information, a lot of extra context that you don't get from what you see. And it is heartbreaking and i almost cried i was welling up as we were having that interview that's how emotional it gets so if you have seen it then listen it adds more if you've not seen it then i'm also glad that you're listening to this first because it will it will it stays with you let's just put it that way very very powerful and a great piece of filmmaking absolutely and as I say to him, I'm so conflicted. I'm like, that is such a good piece of natural history documentary making, but also I wish I'd never seen it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's nature, red in teeth and claw, and it's hard to watch, but it's also a really important part of life is, you know, that the, these animals are living on the precipice. They're living in really extreme environments and they have challenges to face and we shouldn't shy away from those challenges. And, and yeah, we don't. So yeah, it's an important piece of, television i think and in the context of this episode we're also talking to professor christine janice who gives us an overview of mammalian evolution throughout the cenozoic and really if i'm going to be talking about mammals with anyone it would probably be with christine yeah christine is is fantastic i was uh, very lucky that she was my master supervisor for the jaw study that i did and um yeah that that project was really shaped by uh, a vast wealth of knowledge and passion for this incredible group of creatures. So what are some of the big transitions, the big events, the big changes that we see from this episode? Well, the first, I mean, we see some recovery from the, the KPG impact event, the, the massive extinction that wiped out those, those big dinosaurs. Obviously, the birds survived, but those big dinosaurs are gone and uh, we we have this this niche that is is ready to be filled by by the mammals, and so uh, we we start in the forests, and this is a nice example of where the, we've used modern animals to demonstrate a concept, a point that is important, and that is that mammals are highly adaptable, and uh, they're well suited to these these dense forests that would have existed after after the KPG after the recovery um, period. So mammals starting small. And getting intelligent, we we go from uh, coatis in South America to to capuchins monkeys, capuchin monkeys, um, and uh, some tool use there. Um, th as animals, they are really charismatic and quite funny, uh, and we we demonstrate some uh, some really nifty tricks that they've learned. Uh, I think there's a very strict definition of what tool use actually is, but uh, yeah, they're, they're certainly very intelligent and very resourceful. So that's probably one of the big things, really, especially relevant to us, is is the evolution of intelligence, the uh, the, the building up of, of of a society, I suppose, really, in these these little lovely monkeys. Um, <laughs> but probably the, one of the most dramatic ones, of course, is that mammals 
start to take to the air and they start to take to the oceans again. Um, lots of animals are taken to the air before them. There was the, the, the birds, obviously, and we've got the pterosaurs, the now extinct pterosaurs at this stage in the series. And uh, it's, it's mammals' turn to do that. And bats make up about, I think, a quarter of all living species of mammal. mammal. They're, they're really successful. Uh, and they do dominate the skies alongside the birds. They're, they are the night to the bird's day. And so that's a really important thing that we cover. And we actually have an interaction between birds and bats in, in one sequence, so demonstrating quite how good they are in the air. Um, but I think probably one of the most dramatic is is the return to the oceans because, yeah, obviously during our um, evolutionary history, fish to amphibians crawling out of the water for the first time, exploring a new habitat, taking advantage of the resources on land, the food sources, the uh, the the escape route out of the oceans that was, at that time was full of uh, big monstrous fish and sea scorpions. Dave, I won't forget about them. Nope. So, yeah, we, we you've done that, you know, hundreds of millions of years before, and the mammals are returning to the oceans. You know, we obviously got seals and dugongs and that kind of thing, but the whale evolution is probably one of the most dramatic that we see. Uh, so we follow Myocetus, which is uh, a sort of transition fossil between a land. Uh, ancestor and, and modern whales and we we see it adventuring out into the oceans only to meet a more ancient predator um, but i think that's by far the most dramatic transition that we see for the mammals and i'm guessing you were pretty pleased to get that predator in there so that was a todus yes I, i'm always happy for big sharks i think they are in, infinitely cool creatures and very beautiful creatures even the biggest most toothy ones amongst them and yeah uh, todus is, is one of those that is is absolutely huge um this particular species is otodus uh obliquus because uh, that fit the the time period of myocetus that then later on went into a to, to evolve into megalodon otodus megalodon so it's a very charismatic line of sharks certainly I think one of my favorite scenes, and this is probably because I have a cat, is uh, Smilodon just being a cat, acting in a way that reminds you that it's <laughs> yeah. a cat. Whoever designed that scene definitely has a cat because I recognize that behavior. I recognize the thought processes going in there, the patting of those glyptodonts, and especially the little ones. So it's like, is it going to get it? <laughs> yeah 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 it, it keeps you on the edge of your seat that one it's um yeah i, th I think you're right i think there's a lot of sort of cat owners that that fed into that behavior because i mean <laughs> i don't i don't think we asked for those little touches initially because yeah it, it, it i mean it's it's roaming around them and it's sort of playing with them and toying with them and you know you get these little ear flicks from the the smile of dawn and it's sort of like you know using its paw to to pat the the Didicurus and stuff like that, and even lick it at one point, you know. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cat like behaviour in that scene, which is beautiful. And you know, we, we yeah, we we couldn't have hoped for better for that sequence. It's I think that's probably my favourite in this episode as well. I also want to give a huge shout out to you getting circumpolar ocean currents into this. Thank you very much. Yes, um, we didn't shy away from the technical language when it was needed. Um, I think a really po uh, important part of outreach is just recognizing the fact that, uh, especially something like paleontology has a lot of jargon, um, and that can be quite off-putting for people. But in this particular case, it, it's it's such a significant uh, beast. You know, I mean, it, it's it's one of the Earth's most important features at this time. It's starting to isolate Antarctica. Antarctica is starting to freeze, and with it taking all that moisture from the rest of the Earth, it's it's really one of the big causes of the drying out of these important biomes around Earth and, you know, perhaps fueling extinction. So, yeah, we had to talk about it, and I'm glad we did because it's, uh, yeah, there's no shorter way of saying circumpolar current there, unfortunately. If there was a, a more cool way of saying it, I certainly would have <laughs> chosen that. Antarctic roundabout. That's the one, yeah. Antarctic it's, it's, water roundabout. Water roundabout. Strongest current on Earth as well. <laughs> the, the world's biggest lazy river. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm guessing there'll be a bigger one. I'm sure the Pacific is. No, it's the fastest. It's uh, it, I, I can't oh, remember the, the exact. The fastest and strongest. I think in terms of volume of water that moves uh, through, uh, especially that that piece of land. You know, you've got the um, Argentina and South America, um, and you've got Antarctica. Through that gap, it's it's going incredibly quickly. We need to uh, rebrand it. 
hey kids, do you want to go in the world's fastest lazy river? <laughs> I don't think it would sell very well because it's too cold. <laughs> Coldest river. Rebrand it. It's cool. Okay. <laughs> you do that. I should have been in marketing. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the puns. So sell me the rest of this episode. So after that point, after we talk about the uh, Antarctic Circumpolar Currents, we go on to talk about the effect it had on biomes. And uh, as I've just uh, you know, talked about, we, we, it's a drying. It's a, it's a removal of lots and lots of water from the uh, Earth systems, which means that we start to lose some of those lush rainforests and uh, get more grasslands. And animals that were adapted to eat broad leaves and, and soft soft vegetation, they, they started to go extinct. And in this particular case, we talk about megacerops, which is, uh, I think they used to be called brontotheres, or brontotherium, sorry. And these are absolutely massive things. They're, they're three tons in weight, four meters long. Um, and yeah, they're absolute beasts. They sort of resemble rhinos. And we, we channeled rhinos as, as some of the behavior in this with two of the males fighting each other. Um, and then the other important aspect of the spreading of the grasslands is that, yes, it, grass had evolved uh, at the, in the time of the dinosaurs, but those grasslands didn't really spread until about maybe 25, 20 million years ago when it was uh, dry and there were lots of fires ravaging uh, the, these great plains. And grass can grow from its roots upwards rather than most plants, which which tend to grow from the tips of their, their branches. So grass was ready to take over, and with it came this slew of grazing animals that were uh, adapted to eating quite a tough vegetation, quite a tough medium and tough food. And of course, with the evolution of things like you know zebra and wildebeest and the ones that we know today, came the super fast predators to, to prey on them. So really nice sequence with zebras and cheetahs. And that leads really nicely on to uh, the, the plains of South America and the Didacora scene that we talked about. And uh, yeah, that, after that, it's, it's talking about the extremes, really. The, the big cats especially are very adaptable and uh, the, probably one of the most adaptable of all is, is the snow leopard. So we, we talk about the growth of the Himalayas. Uh, we talk about the effect that has on, on climate. We meet the snow leopard in its native Himalayan home. And uh, yeah, we, we, we know how that ends in that particular case. And yeah, having conquered the highest place on earth, on, on land, we, we talk about mammals taking to the air. So a bit of a flip back to the, the earlier stages of the Cenozoic, talking about birds versus bats. And the other great transition, which is water, um, entering the water for the first time, going from land to water with the whales. And the, the, uh, the, I suppose the climax of the whole film is, is following humpback whales as they they go through this kind of mating ritual where they they chase and chase and chase and it's really quite violent and the, the whole scene is is beautifully shot and i think they had to invent a new stabilized camera just to get those shots because it's not the easiest thing to get a diver in the water following whales at whatever it is seven knots you know uh, and right right at the end we we meet possibly the most familiar mammal of all a little a little sneak peek of episode 8 as uh, some figures walk out of the snow it's a good way to end it's a good cliffhanger mm. exactly <laughs> who could that be <laughs> um tom you uh you interchange zebra and zebra i wasn't oh, like i'm that so one sorry i will write you a formal letter of apology david i, I apologize profusely and I, i'd like to take this opportunity as well to apologize to all zebra and zebra that may be listening <laughs> <laughs> They, like I, do not accept your apology. <laughs> do better. Okay. Right. Um, so let's get on with episode seven. It's a great one. Lots of mammaly information in there for you all. And uh, we'll be back in episode eight with some humans.